Hello, everyone, and welcome to our monthly MindFire educational webinar. We're excited you're joining us, and uh, we've got a ton of people signed up for today. Uh, we've got a really good session with one of our longtime customers, and uh, we've got uh, people joining us as I speak. So let's go ahead and start to uh, get in the uh, housekeeping, and I assume you can see my slides. Lisa, can you see my slides on your end? Yes, I sure can. Awesome. Okay, so we're good to go there, and we've got Ramin uh, manning the controls for questions. So if you have any questions, uh, please uh, ask as many questions as you have. We'll get them all answered. You should be able to hear us now. If you don't, please send us a chat message, and we'll walk you through what a uh, possible issue might be. Uh, favorite question for everyone attending these sessions is always, is the session going to be recorded? Of course, it'll be recorded. It'll be available for viewing afterwards, so you can really – uh, dive into the material and, and benefit from it. I see a question being asked right now, so uh, let me just pause for a second and see what that, that one is. Hold on a second. Okay, and go to the chat. All right, let's move on. And uh, how you interact with us. There's a couple ways you can interact with us. Uh, you can submit questions uh, during the session uh, via chat. That's the preferred method, and you can ask as many questions as you'd like. Uh, and if you're a brave soul, you could even ask a live question uh, during our Q&A at the end of today's session. So uh, don't be shy, and uh, you can use either method, whatever your preferred method is. Uh, today's presenters, of course, all of you know me, Joe Manis, Executive Vice President of MyFire. And uh, joining me today is Lisa Arzano, the president of McCardle Solutions, a longtime customer of ours and a good friend. Uh, she's a rock star in our eyes. Hey, Lisa, how are you doing today? I'm great. Thanks, Joe. And thanks for joining us. How's the weather back here at the Woods today? Beautiful. It's almost 80 degrees. Awesome, because I know you guys had a brutal winter. <laughs> oh, Lisa's yeah. Back. Too much snow. Too much yeah. snow. That's a greater Washington, D.C. area. Uh, so... We'll get back to Lisa here shortly. Our objectives for today, well, uh, we're going to explore really a number of areas about uh, marketing program success, how Lisa's growing her company in a number of areas. We really have three vignettes today. The first section will be all about self-promotion. Promotion. Lisa and her team doing a phenomenal job of uh, ongoing self-promotion, and I think there's something to be gained uh, and learned in this section, so we'll look forward to looking at that. The second session uh, will be, uh, we're going to actually look at one of her uh, programs. It's been a couple year customer that um, started, really was found through one of their self promotion activities. And uh, it's a great example of uh, leveraging lead nurturing. And then finally, I think one of my favorite sections is Lisa and I are going to kind of have a fireside chat where we're going to ask her about 10 different questions and let her kind of free form. Um, and she's such a great resource and the way she's evolved her company successfully. Uh, so I think you'll find that really a riveting section as well. So you can see we've got three really great sections for you. Each one's unique. And of course, our goal for today's session is to give you actionable insight, something you can take away from today's session, apply to your business, and, and grow like Lisa has. All right, so just real quick, let's take a couple minutes, and we've got a couple MindFire updates that I want to uh, spend a couple minutes with you. And first of all, about MindFire, um, for many of you, uh, you know, you're still working with our wonderful LWC solution, and uh, many of you are also using the studio. And it was interesting, one of our customers was talking to another customer the other day and said, well, no, they don't, they don't have LWC anymore. Well, you know, LWC is, is still in the product line and, and is still doing exceptionally well. Um, both platforms... Uh, are generating uh, a number of different innovative marketing programs uh, for customers of all, all kinds, B2B, B2C, uh, across 30 different vertical markets. So uh, I didn't want uh, anyone on the call today uh, to really not realize that uh, LWC is still going strong, just as Studio is. Uh, LWC is more of a campaign-centric solution. LW, uh, Studio is a contact-centric lead nurturing program, both great platforms. So uh, if we can help you in any area to optimize your uh, solution, when in doubt, ask for help. So please don't be shy. 
Now, here's another uh, interesting conversation I had with uh, one of our uh, partners recently, and he said, well, Joe, our customers just aren't asking for it. You know, it's an interesting term. Um, I think what he was trying to say is they're not asking for pearls, and of course they're not asking for pearls. Um, the reality is when you start to offer marketing services to your customers, you've got a different group of decision makers, and every company in America is searching for new customer acquisition program success. And um, that every study shows this, uh, the lion's share of their marketing investment is going towards new customer acquisition. So if your customers aren't asking for it, you might have a sales issue. You might be trying to sell marketing services to the print buyer. Lisa will probably address that. Uh, but the truth is that every one of your customers is spending marketing dollars every day. So if you're not growing your business exponentially, we really need to take a look at that, and I'd love to have a conversation with you on it. Now, let me show you. Uh, John Barber and uh, Summit Direct Mail out of uh, Dallas is one of our largest customers. And I recently had the pleasure of guest speaking at a Canon event in Germany uh, a week or so ago. And uh, when we were getting off the elevator for uh, an event, uh, we ran into one of the other attendees who's not a mine fire customer. And John said to the, when he introduced me to Rob, he said, Rob, 80% of our new business is coming from the mine fire solution. So you need to spend some time with Joe because um, mine fire can help your business. Uh, 80% of his new business acquisition comes from our solution. So again, if a customer says, that, if you're telling me that your customers aren't asking for it, I would submit that we need to, to revisit how you're approaching your customers. Now, let's talk just a moment about training development. Um, we've got a number of uh, training development programs going to help you grow your business. And if you're a studio user, we've got our advanced uh, certified marketing automation training taking place June 18th and 19th in Irvine. We'd love to have you join us. Anybody that's gone through the program has uh, raved about it. It's just a wonderful program. So if you need some technical training on how to optimize the studio, uh, please join us. And uh, if you've got a, uh, you need a little sales help, uh, we've got our advanced marketing automation sales training June 25th and 26th in Irvine. And uh, Lisa and her team have gone through it, and she can comment on what it's meant to her business. So, uh, again, we'd love to have you. This is how you can take your business to the next level. You know, in 2014, when we think about why you should care about multi-channel marketing automation, uh, it's because it's the fastest growing area and, and customers are looking for help. CMO Council study said 60% of marketers are looking for help in this area. That should be you. And this is a slide that Ramin and I created that's just a really simple way to talk about multi-channel marketing solutions. You know, we're leveraging the different media. It starts with that unique strategy on how we're going to help the marketer achieve their specific and unique objective, program objective. It's driven by the data, and that data can be used on so many different levels today in these innovative programs, highly personalized. It's fueled by the technology using being used appropriately, and that's part of the, the dialogue you have with your customer about how you're going to leverage the technology to meet their specific unique needs. And it delivers optimized results. So this is a really simple slide. If you'd like to have it, it would be my pleasure to send it over to you. I found in the marketers that I've presented to, it has really, really helped them uh, get it quickly. All right, so there's a little housekeeping. Let's go ahead and move on. And as we think in terms of building your business for success, uh, again, I want to encourage you to reach out to us so that we can help you uh, grow your business. All right, so let's welcome back Lisa. Lisa, you still there? Yep, still here, Joe. Thanks. All right, so uh, welcome back, and uh, we're excited to have have you with us today. And uh, Lisa, why don't you just take two minutes and give a little overview on McArdle, or where you're located, and uh, you know, just a high level overview. Okay, um, McArdle is uh, uh, located right outside of uh, Washington, D.C., about 45-minute drive. Um, we've been in business since 1947. Um, the genesis of our business was uh, a printing company, and over the course of time, you know, we've, in, we've evolved, uh, you know, because of our customers' needs into um, offering lots of different services. So um, still printing, uh, digital printing, um, and then, of course, the marketing services that we um, offer uh, with your software that's been, you know, really successful for us. So um, really just selling uh, solutions to our clients based on their um, areas 
where they have gaps in the resource challenge, um, you know, we come in and, and talk to them about uh, what their needs are. So um, that's Perfect. basically a high-level overview. Perfect. Thank you. All right, so let's talk about the first section, self-promotion programs. And this has been a, a part of Lisa's team for some time. It's been a critical part of her ongoing marketing. They've done some remarkable things. And let, let's just go to the six program areas. So, Lisa, you know, you, you really focused on six different areas. We're going to get into each of these areas. Uh, but just, you know, for the audience, you've got your outbound marketing programs, which we'll speak to here in a second. You've got your seminar series. Uh, your educational webinars that you do from time to time, you leverage Connect Magazine, your Lunch and Learn seminars, which we'll talk about, and then, of course, you've got your calendar uh, that you're using as well. So let's start with uh, You Don't Know Jack, and that's kind of one of your self-promotion programs. What about it? Yeah, so we, um, you know, we have a small sales force here. Um, we, as Joe has said to me a million times, we sit in a really uh, rich uh, territory of D.C., Maryland, and, and Virginia, um, and we really wanted to, um, you know, practice what we preach for our clients, and so this whole, um, you know, topic of lead nurturing, um, and we wanted to drive that for, for our salespeople. We also, you know, um, use Salesforce, so we have our own CRM and all of the campaigns that we do um, to uncover new business opportunities for ourselves, uh, we do with lead nurturing campaigns like this. So Jack was... Um, a campaign that we created internally, uh, and we went out to the corporate uh, and association market as well as um, educational. So the snapshot that uh, Joe has on the screen right now was the um, collegiate version, and then we had a corporate version. So we had Jill, you know, in a in a business suit, and we had Jack, uh, obviously, in a business suit as well. Um, but the campaign really successful for us um, in getting FaceTime and appointments for um, our sales team, and then you know promoting the services that we offer around um, cross-channel, you know, print, mail, fulfillment, and design. So that was uh, that one. Great. And then last he, year, you kicked off yeah. the Infinite Toolbox, which I loved. Yeah. Now, this one's been really, uh, I would say, um, more successful from the standpoint of, uh, so we designed this campaign. It was a dimensional campaign where Jack was more, we sent everything out in the clear um, envelopes. Uh, the the multi-touch campaign here with the toolbox uh, actually went out in a box, and then inside of the box, um, we used the Mohawk product, uh, the pillow box, and we skinned it like a toolbox, and then inside was this trifold brochure where we were citing um, facts from DMA uh, and different sources to, you know, communicate to our customers, you know, that we knew that they were having a challenge um, growing their business as well. No one has ever said to us that they have you know, more revenue than they need and they don't need to market, um, you know, in a drip uh, campaign style. And so uh, we had several customers actually knock off this campaign to um, promote their own uh, new levels of business. We had two publishers um, and one association that asked if they could take this same concept and repurpose it, which, of course, we, we did because then they, in turn, used our services to um, promote their business. So this was a very effective uh, campaign that we built for our sales team. Um, so the first piece that went out was the 3D package. Then they got touched with an email. Then they got touched with a sales call um, from the sales team. Then they got a direct mail uh, card with, um, you know, uh, one version, the hammer. Then another email. Then another sales call. Um, so we touched them uh, uh, over the course of six months. And uh, this has been a really effective uh, tool for our salespeople to get appointments and grow our business, uh, you know, as Joe has always said to me, in a more effective, um, intentional way. Yeah, and I, I just love the messaging you did. I mean, uh, every panel, if a customer just looked at that one section alone, there was great value there. So you guys really did a great job with that. I really loved it. All right, so six-month program, everyone. I mean, Lisa and her team built off that, that initial touch of the toolbox, ongoing lead nurturing, because we know that very seldom will the first touch alone be enough to drive them in the door. All right, so a couple great examples of self-promotion. Uh, they live and breathe it uh, year over year, and that's one of the reasons they're successful. Now let's talk about the seminar series uh, for a moment, okay. Lisa. I know you've been doing that for a number of years, and uh, this year, yep. 2014 skin. Yep. 
Yeah, so we've um, we've been uh, educating our, our clients as well as our prospects for well over 10 years. So this is our 10th uh, seminar series uh, brochure. So we um, intentionally, you know, put together a bi-monthly uh, calendar of seminars. We go to our clients and we talk to them about, you know, um, where are their gaps for um, educating their their staff as well as, as themselves. And then we partner um, – with people in our industry, um, the paper industry, um, and then different, uh, you know, top thought uh, leaders to help us educate our clients. And so we run the seminar series, you know, here at our office. We've got a dedicated, nice space that um, we educate in. And then we also take it on the road. So if we have a client, and I had a client, we just did this for not too long ago, um, they wanted us to talk to them about social media to 65 of their managers at one of their quarterly meetings. So we brought the speaker and a and a condensed version of our seminar to them on site. Um, and it's just a, it's a nice differentiator, um, you know, to put in front of your clients because instead of just talking about, you know, one dimension of your business, um, you can also talk to them about how you can partner with them and really truly become a resource for them um, and educate them. So we've, we actually landed uh, one really large um, customer off of doing a seminar that turned into a half a million dollars worth of business that's mostly um, MindFire, you know, multi-touch campaigns uh, for them for an association. So, um, and the one thing I do want to say, Joe, to, to all of the people that are um, on the call today is all of these things that we do um, are, they're really, really simple. Um, and, and I know that most companies like ours are resource challenged as, as we are. Um, but they're not that hard to put together, and all of your partners, SAPI, Mohawk, have phenomenal resources that they can put at your fingertips for you to be able to um, produce the same kind of seminar and uh, and push it out to your clients. So it, it, it may look like it's you know takes a lot of time, but it really doesn't. Beautiful. Great. And then the educational webinars, uh, which, again, uh, you and I partnered on. This is actually the, the cover slide for one we did back in November. And, yeah, educational webinars allow you to educate your customers, build their confidence in your organization's capabilities, demonstrate expertise, and, you know, improve the ROI. And uh, you can see in the webinar content that uh, it's very focused on today's marketer, the challenges they face. And then uh, Lisa and I uh, jointly presented during that webinar. So, again, another strategy for growing the business. Thoughts? Yeah, I, I um, you know, I can't, I can't say enough about, uh, you know, doing webinars and educating because, you know, your customers are and your prospects are, you know, constantly in a mode of deciding if you're the right partner for them. And I think, you know, people need to make sure that they stay really focused on demonstrating all the time. So, you know, that's our intent all along with our multi-touch campaigns with the Jack campaign, then leading into the Toolbox campaign, then touching them with the seminar series, using, um, you know, the Connect magazine to, to put, you know, really relevant marketing information in front of them, you know, partnering with MindFire to, you know, get in front of our of our uh, clients as well as our prospects because I, I think that everyone should stay, you know, focused on, you know, those, pro those prospects because it's a much longer sales cycle um, that we're in than, than we used to be, I think, anyway. And, um, and I think it creates dialogue where they get to really test drive the culture, um, of your business and see that you really do practice what you preach and that you would be a good partner for them to bring on board to help them grow their business as well. So I can't say enough about it. Cool. And the other thing I like about webinars is it gives your sales team the opportunity for three levels of follow-up. You know, obviously you're following up with the registered uh, attendees who didn't make it as well as the attendees that actually did. You get to send out a thank you email with a recorded session link and a PDF of the presentation. And, of course, sales is following up with everyone. It's another opportunity for a conversation. So that's another reason to consider it. All right, Connect Magazine, you touched on, you know, you really your focus there is to stay top of mind and provide high-value content, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. we, uh, we, we love the magazine. Um, our clients love it. And, 
again, um, you know, this was a really easy way for us to, A, you know, we don't want to forget about the fact that a lot of us, you know, also print as well. Um, and, but giving them that marketing data, um, and it's another touch point for the salespeople, and it's another reason, like you said, Joe, for them to call and talk about certain articles that are, you know, really relevant um, mm -hmm. and solving problems that our customers are having today. So we send that out um, bi-monthly, and we also, uh, for our prospects, we send it out um, electronically with some page-turning software, and then we dice up the magazine um, and post uh, the really great articles, which they, they're all really good. Um, we post them on our LinkedIn uh, pages for the salespeople, so I push all of that to the reps so that they constantly have um, their name and our company name out there in the marketplace. Beautiful. And then Lunch and Learn uh, seminars, uh, I found that really interesting that you've had a number of major wins that started with your seminar series or, you know, they had such a big group, they say, can you come on site? And that's been really effective for you. Yeah. Definitely. It's, uh, it's a big tool for us. And, um, you know, and, and you get people in the room uh, that otherwise the, the salespeople are in front of, you know, one person, uh, but then they invite uh, other decision makers to come into the meeting to hear, you know, really current content um, in a condensed uh, setting. We, you know, bring lunch if they want us to, and um, we get exposure to 15 people in a room versus one or two. So it, it really is a fabulous, um, you know, way to get in front of people. Beautiful. And I would submit to the, you know, the folks on the call today that another effective uh, derivative of that lunch and learn approach is to hold a monthly lunch and learn in your own office. Invite 10 or 12 executives from different companies to join you over lunch and introduce these new innovative Sales ready lead nurturing marketing automation programs. It's just an, a nice, small, intimate gathering where a lot of success can be achieved. Right. right. And then, and then you're leveraging the calendar uh, as again another dimension of your ongoing touches. Right. Yeah. The calendar is really uh, successful as well, and um, every year. <clears throat> you know, we we um, have a different uh, approach. So last year we um, partnered with um, some paper vendors, and each month was on a different substrate so that we could demonstrate all the different ways that our clients could use that through a marketing program like a multi-touch campaign or, or one-dimensional, even though that's not what we really promote. But, um, again, it's another talking point. So we, we hand-deliver as many as possible, and then prospects, we mail them. Um, this year's calendar calendar was um, uh, showing how um, we could take the month and we, we perfed the card down the middle and turned it into note cards so that we could show them that there was always another dimension to a piece for them to continue sending messages and thank yous, and um, that's the snapshot that we have up there today. Um, but again, it's something that our clients, um, you know, call us and ask us if we're producing the calendar because they love to um, have them on their desk, and it's another way for us to market. So. Yeah, excellent. So as we summarize, you know, this uh, program that Lisa's put together, she's got, you know, six foundational pieces to her program, but when you think in terms of the overall value that she and her team achieve from that, you know, it's ongoing, it's consistent with messaging and touches across different media and different venues. It's always about here's how we can help you, it's completely focused on the deliverables, you know, how we can help you transform your business results. And uh, obviously it's working because, you know, uh, it's opening up new doors of opportunity for small, medium, and large customers. Right. All right. So now there's self-promotion. I'm sure there's some additional questions that we'll get to in the wrap-up section, but that's just a great way to start today's session. Now let's segue to actually one of those customers that came from one of those Lunch and Learn uh, and uh, really what we want to do is just show how, again, by starting the dialogue, it opens up doors of opportunity. And then here's an actual nurturing program that Lisa and her team are now in their second year with this customer, building on what the foundational start was in year one. Um, it's ANCC, uh, which is a nursing accreditation, very competitive business, uh, and they're trying to uh, promote their brand and uh, provide uh, accredited uh, nursing uh, programs to the nurses. And Lisa, this literally came from one of those lunch and learn uh, on-site uh, visits, correct? 
Uh, yeah, it did. And, and our, you know, the, the, the multi-touch marketing as well, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, this program, uh, as we discussed uh, previously, was really to drive awareness uh, towards certification, including the benefits and resources. Uh, and it was a multi-touch program. As you can see here, and this will scare some of you when you look at this, but this was what Lisa and her team came up with from a strategic standpoint for the multi-touch, the ongoing emails, the direct mail touches, to engage a dialogue with the nurse uh, when they are ready, because we know some nurses are super busy. They first touch, they may not have responded to. The second touch, they may not have. The third, or maybe they did raise their hand on the third touch, and then they went silent for several months. The program reengaged them every step of the way, and and I think you know this was the secret sauce that Lisa and her team created that uh, you know provided the the results for uh, AMCC, and there was a lot of work in this. <laughs> Yeah. Thoughts on that? Uh, absolutely. Uh, Twelve-month program, and as you can see, the initial program started with 25,000 records, uh, alternating email and direct mail outreach uh, to both responders and non-responders. And uh, you know, you can see this particular slide and how Lisa and her team position themselves. And we'll talk more about this in the Q&A section. But um, this slide, when I look at this slide with the capabilities, your team is designing these capabilities to each customer based on their need, aren't you, Lisa? Yeah, we definitely are, yep. And you can see when you look at this, she's talking about, her team's talking about copywriting and design, marketing program design and implementation, uh, the personalized microsite development, all triggered activity associated with the visits, uh, email and print development, and of course, the monthly results track and reporting. Making it really easy for the customer to see that Lisa and her team are doing the heavy lifting, and they really don't need to worry about much because her team is going to take it from soup to nuts. Just a few examples of, you know, the direct mail pieces, very tight messaging. Um, and, again, because it was multi-touch, there was different messages during different weeks of the month, all driven with links to the personalized site from the email, and uh, the direct mail. Again, very tight messaging uh, to meet the program requirements, and of course the micro page uh, where they could get more information or actually start to sign up for accreditation. The results that were achieved, uh, no surprise, Lisa and her team normally deliver exceptional results. They had an overall response rate of 22.5%, visit rate of 6%, uh, and uh, over 2,089 nurses were engaged newly with the program as a result of this very successful program. Any final thoughts on this whole process, Lisa, and the, the whole program? Uh, yeah, I think um, I just think the one you know thing to note uh, for people is you know um, stepping into this can feel um, you know definitely o overwhelming and um, and overwhelming for clients as well. So I can't stress enough. Um, you know, how our team really tries to simplify um, how clients can engage, um, you know, in, in this type of marketing and technology uh, to really drive results in a very intentional way. And, um, and the easier you can make it feel, um, I think the easier it is for, you know, um, for them to bring clients like this, um, you know, on board. So I think that's the one you know, thing that I hear from people uh, all the time is they say, well, I, I don't have designers, I don't have writers, um, I, I don't feel like I can do something like this. And you really can. There, You'd be surprised how many people are at your fingertips. Um, and I can talk to people about it offline as well too, Joe, about what we've done in partnering with people to be able to deliver uh, these types of, of campaigns and programs to people. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think the other challenge, and you and I have spent hours talking about this, is um, during the closing cycle, you may have a customer that's really, really excited about doing a program, and they'll ask a buying question like, wow, it looks great, um, but, you know, I, I don't know if I have the time to get everything ready to get started. You know, you, just perfect buying uh, signal there. And uh, I, having been on actual calls with some of our other customers, sometimes um, they're not prepared for that question and to make it simple. And so that would be, again, the coaching tip that Lisa already said which is, um, you know, make it easy 
to say yes, make it easy to get started. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, yeah. And I think, too, Joe, the other thing to note where I've seen a lot of people struggle with this, and, and you and I have talked about it a million times, is you have to be really, really confident about the value that you're bringing um, to your customer's business. And, and Joe mentions it all the time to me in our seminars all about the ROI. And you can't be afraid of the ROI. So I think that's one thing that Joe um, definitely helps everyone out with a lot is the coaching around that with your sales team and even ownership of businesses. If there's anyone on the call that, that is running a business, um, you know, you, you have to talk around that ROI out of the gate and make sure that they – those prospects fit, as Joe would always say, the ideal customer profile because um, it's, you know, you don't want to sell $5,000 campaigns, you know, because they, they, do, they do take a lot of uh, time and effort. Um, so people have to know that this isn't a one and done, you know, kind of sale. You really have got to have a different kind of conversation with, um, you know, a CMO or a VP of communications. They all understand that conversation, but you can't be shy about the value of it. Yep. Amen. All right, great. Now that leads us to our business growth discussion, which Lisa and I are kind of already touching on some of those elements, which I think this is probably an area of opportunity for all of us to learn because uh, it's an area that keeps all of us up at night. You know, how are we going to grow our business? What can I do fundamentally that's going to allow us to win more? And, again, when you think in terms of well-executed marketing programs, they leverage – in many cases, your key capability, which is print. Um, and so this is a huge area of opportunity. So I, uh, Lisa and I, when we talked earlier in the week, we've selected uh, a number of questions. And, uh, again, we've got 10 starter questions here, I believe, and we can certainly have more dialogue in the Q&A section after we finish this. So starting with uh, the high-level first question, transformation, uh, you know, Lisa, we've been working together five years, three years intensely. You're not the same company you were five years ago. What's changed? What's your evolution been like? Um, it's uh, actually been a challenging evolution, honestly. <clears throat> so I really think that um, it's the same challenge that all of our customers have, um, you know, the other companies that are on the line. Um, you know, technology um, has really transformed how we communicate with one another. And I think it's made it even more difficult. Um, I know for our customers, they're always trying to wrap around, um, you know, how they get in front of, of prospects, how they keep their customers informed with what their businesses do. Um, and so that's really the, the um, evolution of where we've come from, you know, just being a printer to um, offering these other services to uh, help make us more a valuable uh, resource and also help us grow our business, you know, in other areas that we didn't uh, have online before. So that's um, the technology is really, I'd, I'd have to say, Joe, is, the, is what's transformed us. And we're going to get into some of these other areas, and I, I think you guys have done a great job with technology. I also think the thing that I admire most about you as a leader is you've not been afraid of change. You've made some tough decisions staff-wise, personnel, which are always difficult, and you, yeah. your, your makeup of your organization on the technical side, the sales side, has dramatically changed as well. Yeah, it, it definitely has. And finding the right people, you know, we're all, we uh, really look for uh, people who have a really wide bandwidth of uh, understanding and, and are not afraid of technology because um, we're not just a printer anymore. So people have to really, you know, be open to that. So um, we don't look for the traditional, you know, salesperson anymore. We believe that less is more. So we have a small sales staff that we invest a lot of um resources and time into, you know, training and educating, um, and then by marketing and taking control of the marketing, this lead nurturing uh, process, um, they have, you know, all of their time is out in front of people, which is what they love to do. Um, I do all the heavy lifting for list creation, um, I, identifying who those ITPs are, um, and creating uh, lists and letters, um, so I have a whole, you know, format um, set for them, and I think that's you know, the one thing that I think um, companies are challenged with today is they wait for their salespeople to prospect and market for them. And I think that if you create that for your sales team and you incorporate a mind fire, you know, technology and some intentional drip campaigns on your own, um, you will transform your business. 
Amen. And, you know, that brings to mind, uh, and I can never remember the company name, um, but there was a large 100-year-old company in Dallas a year and a half ago that closed their doors. And when the president was asked, you know, how did this happen, they were big. He said, you know, the truth is, at the end of the day, we stopped building new customers into our business. You know, our salespeople really weren't equipped to go sell the new way. And at the end of the day, that's why I've been beating the drum on self-promotion, uh, whether you're self-promoting for print uh, and marketing services, which you should be. Um, that helps fuel your new revenue growth. All right, it's a great answer. Thank you. All right, ongoing evolution. Um, you know, you kind of touched on this a little bit, but, you know, as you've been evolving, uh, is there anything that you, you you want to comment on that you've learned over the last several years? Uh, obviously, you spoke to technology. Is there any other that comes to mind? Um, I think the one, Joe, that, and, and, you, and you helped me on this when we did the um, two-day, you know, sales training mm -hmm. uh, here. Um, that that was really um, a transformation for our team, and uh, I think I think a lot of people um, don't spend enough time uh, educating their sales reps in um, you know communicating this type of solution um, and what it can really do uh, for their existing clients and then their prospects. So that that was a great uh, two days that we had with you and the and the reps really felt so much more comfortable um, in communicating to CMOs and VPs of communications and we, you know, when we did that, um, uh, I don't know, what we, what do we call it, the on the spot when they all stood up and they had to, you know, communicate with role you like playing. you were there. The, yeah, yeah, the role, role playing. They, they, they hated the thought of it, but once they did it, um, afterwards they, they all said, God, you know, thanks for torturing me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But it was a really, it was, it was a really positive um fired up group after those two days. So I, I would, you know, urge everyone to um you know if you're gonna if you're gonna engage in this, make sure that your reps feel comfortable because if they don't they won't promote it. Yeah, amen. And the other thing I would say that again that Lisa does well is she leads by example and she can talk the talk and walk the walk on this and she sat through every hour of that training, um, which is a strong statement to her staff. This is important to our success. Um, I'm involved, I'm invested in this, and uh, let's learn together. So, again, that would be my coaching tip to all the uh, owners that are on the call today. Yeah. Challenges. So uh, what do you view as the biggest challenge you face today, you know, whether it be, you know, marketing automation, mind fire, or building your revenues as a company? What are you feeling? Joe, is that to me? Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I thought somebody – I didn't see if somebody wrote in a question. Um, I mean, you know, for for us, it's just it, – the biggest challenge we have is staying, you know, staying in front of all of these things. Um, you know, I, I think everyone – you know, time is uh, an issue for, for all of us. And, um, you know, so I – what I do is I – I really, uh, I'm a filter for um, our customers uh, and our salespeople, so I'm always um, communicating with uh, top of mind people and finding out, uh, you know, what is it that I need to present, you know, to our customers to remain um, valuable. Um, and so I'd say that the biggest challenge is just, you know, wrapping around all of that information and then letting uh, the most important and relevant things bubble up to the top. So it's... Uh, it's just a change, just staying yeah. ahead of the change. Manager. Yeah. yeah. And I put one of your quotes on this this slide. You can't be fearful of value of what you're offering the customer. And this came from hours of Lisa and I talking about, um, you know, the right price for the services you're offering. And sometimes some of the sales reps are great at getting it 90% of the way, but when it came to asking for $25,000, $50,000, $100,000, $250,000, they got cold feet. So I know that yeah. you've been spending a lot of time on that. Yeah, I think you have to coach. Um, you really have to coach your staff because uh, that is definitely, you know, uh, one one project that we sold that was $130,000, and the salesperson said to me, uh, wow, I think this is really expensive. I'm like, why? <laughs> why is it expensive? But when you break it down into running a business and you say that you need two marketing people, you know, you need a certain amount of staff to drive these things and your clients don't have to do that and you drive the car for them and then offer the results, um, 
uh, this particular sales rep was surprised when we presented the number, and the prospective client, they're now a client, said, "Wow, this is a really this is a really great value. I mean, I'm saving a lot of." Um, headcount on this, and I'm going to be able to turn the project over to you and have you report back to me. And uh, and she walked away and, and said, okay, all right, now I get it. So you just have to, you know, walk yep. them through it, you know, and help them present it. Yep, don't be afraid. Customer needs. Uh, how have your corporate customers changed the last couple of years? What are you seeing there? Um, I think that we have gotten um, more selective um, in who we pursue, Joe. So, yeah. you know, our our company's been in business for a long time, and um, and I think over the years when there was, you know, it was a print rich, you know, environment. Everyone was printing. Um, you know, there was a lot of food for everyone. And now, uh, you know, we've become, you know, way more selective in who our ideal customer um, is. You know, who do we want to come through the door? And not everyone is a good fit. So we d we don't go out and look for, um, you know, a corporate account that's only going to do one program a year. That's not a good fit for us. We want somebody who really wants to transform their business. They want to grow their business in a very intentional way. Um, and those are the kinds of uh, clients that we go looking for. So when when I have a prospect or a customer that says, you know, um, I'm, I want to do one of your programs like your toolbox campaign, you know, what can I get for $10,000? And, and I'm very, um, you know, upfront with them and I go, you can't get anything for $10,000. You know, if that's all you want to invest in your business, you're not going to get very good results. But I can sit down and talk to you about programmatically, you know, how our customers, how we help our customers approach their business to get, you know, real results. But a one and done, you know, is not, um, you know, going to help you. And so if they say, well, that's all the money I have, and I go, well, you know, then we're not a good fit. And we walk away. And we're mm -hmm. not afraid to walk away um, because, you know, our resources are limited as well, and we want to make sure that we put them into um, corporations, associations, and the like where we can grow together and truly, over the course of time, develop a relationship and a partnership uh, that works and is a win-win for both sides. Amen. Amen. Um, you know, I think we touched on this a little bit, the disrupted industry, constantly changing, but most of the companies you're working with are searching for new revenue, and you and I... Yeah, you know, we always talk about the new cost of new customer acquisition, and I know that you guys have gotten really good at that dialogue. Uh, yeah, I mean, we it's you know it's a twenty four seven. We're working on it all the time. Um, we're always you know thinking of of you know new ways to get in front of our customers. Um, and the one I think you know the one resounding thing that comes back from the clients and the prospects that we're that we're always asking the question is they're all um, idea starved. And, you know, all of the executives that I work with, um, you know, they're they always looking to us for ideas. And mm -hmm. I think that's one of the things that's happened, you know, with the, you know, the smartphones and tablets and computers and emails. Um, all of the high-level executives that I say to them, you know, when I sent you my, my uh, toolbox campaign, what, what got you the most? And most of the presidents of companies say, I definitely got the box and I opened it. But then once I got the box, I recognized the, you know, the branding in an email that you sent me. And I said, you mean one of the eight emails I sent you? You know, so, um, so I think that's, that's where this, this disruption has, has created a challenge, um, you know, for everyone is just, you've got to touch people and your, and your business has to be in front of them in so many different ways so they can consume you know, your business when it's right for them. Absolutely. That's the ideal customer profile. And, you know, you've already touched on this a little bit. And for a lot of our customers out there, you know, the, at, at the minimum level, if you're thinking of customers that can really consume marketing automation, they have an outside sales team. You see on the right side of the screen, uh, they've got the right dollar value for their product or service. It's not a $50 product. It's 500 or it's 1000 or greater and they have a CRM or at least a good database. And uh, I know that, Lisa, you've already touched on this, so we don't have to go too deep on this, but obviously focusing on the ICP, the ideal customer profile, guiding the reps has is, is definitely helped you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, I mean, and it's, and it's helped them as well. I mean, uh, I think everyone, you know, the more clarity um, – you can create for yourself as a leader of a business um, as well as the, the reps, then, you know, everyone's set up to succeed versus fail. Um, you know, because I have um, I, I have one-on-ones uh, every other week uh, with the reps, and we go over, um, you know, their their 
their database. Um, we go over their database and we talk about, um, you know, who fits and who doesn't fit, and then we eliminate them. Um, you know, even if they have a project with them, I mean, we, we just, um, you know, we're not going to keep our business at the right level if we, you know, continue to pursue the wrong, the wrong kind of client. Perfect. Sales team evolution, good food versus bad food. Over the years, your sales have gone through a number of changes. You know, mm -hmm. you kind of already touched on your sales vision today, but if you could just kind of state it again, what you're trying to do with your sales team. Uh, yeah, so, um, so I mean, I've hired, um, you know, we've had larger sales teams, smaller sales teams, and I've, I've, I think I've landed on the, on the space right now that, um, you know, smaller, uh, is better. Um, you know, uh, sales reps that can, you know, have a dialogue, um, at a, at a corporate level versus, you know, not that print buyers aren't people that we want to talk to for our print side of our business, but, um, for them to be able to really articulate um, our business, understand the challenges that our customers are having, and then, um, you know, and create a, a high-level dialogue with them about how our business can fit into their business. So uh, small sales force, um, you know, and also educating them on this, you know, we talk about this in our own um, company all the time, the good food versus the bad food. You know, as we really looked at, um, you know, our customer makeup and said, um, you know, some of these customers are not a good fit for us anymore. Um, you know, because the industry has evolved, because technology has changed our business radically, you know, we have to change and adjust to it. So um, we need to keep the customers that are good for us and, and really spend our resources on them versus, you know, kind of I think the feeling that most people have is that they, when they're trying to serve everyone, you know, the $10,000 a year mm -hmm. customer or the 50000 you really get diluted. And when you're diluted, you know, your services aren't concentrated and fabulous. And so we really just want um, the service level that we deliver to our clients to be um, at that highest level. So when our competitors do come in, they have to rise up to where we are. Um, and that's and that will be the differentiator, and it has been um, for us now and in the past. Of wow, they're not like McArdle, and we have people that come back to us and say that. So I think going through your, you know, your customers and truly looking at them and saying, you know, who is a good fit for our business now, and and who's going to be able to help sustain our business moving forward. Um, so that was a that was a big journey. Um, you know, that we went on. And it was hard for the salespeople, but, you know, it has to come from the top um, about who those ICPs are and you have to stick to it. Yeah, and I, I think it's obviously paying dividends in the type of customers you're bringing to your organization with new customer acquisition as well as growing your customer base. And I think in terms of some of your team members, I'm thinking of Teresa and the evolution she's made over the last several years. You sit down and have a conversation with her today, and I'd have confidence of uh, her being in front of just about any CEO, you know, talking about how you guys can help them. So it's obviously paying dividends. Right, right. And I think too on that on that um, note too, Joe. I think that the change that I've seen in the in our sales team is um, they've also realized that these smaller clients, if they don't ask the right questions up front and they don't fit that ICP, they can mm -hmm. drain their time as well, and they and they don't have that big of a return. Yeah. You know, so I think that's the other um, that's the other realization that they've had on their own too. Awesome. I think we have one or two questions left in the program, and then we can go over to Q and A. But this one is, you know, a great one. Proposal evolution. You've already touched on one and done programs versus one year programs, and clearly your strategy is is to uh, get the one year program because in today's world, one touch isn't enough. It is all about the ongoing lead nurturing until their sales ready. But you also realize that occasionally the customer wants to put their toe in the water first to, you know, I'm not going to give you a 2 million record database for my most important uh, loyalty program until we do a test, right? Right, right. Yeah, I mean, testing is, is key for us. So, um, you know, we do a lot of... Once we know someone's going to do multiple programs, just so they can they can get the exposure to how the technology works, we'll we'll do the toe in the water campaign, which works out really really well. Um, and that's where we will uh, sell things for a flat fee, um, mm -hmm. you know, for X number of touches. And that and that's worked out well for people because they have to get buy-in sometimes too from people within their organization, and that uh, and that can be a helpful approach. Yep. Perfect. Um, let's see, and then. Unique customer deliverable, and, you know, and I've told you before, in many ways you look 
and act like an agency, not a printer? You know, is that by design or is that through the evolutionary process? Um, you know, I think it's um, it's it's an intentional um, strategy that we have, and I think you know um, it's evolved. You know, even gosh, in the last year, you know, there are still there are still you know accounts that we have that you know we print for, um, but they have said to us, um, you know. We'll eventually get you into the marketing, um, you know, but not right now. But it's great to know that you guys, you know, have these seminars and you're always educating us and you're sending us these marketing magazines because we're positioning ourselves to make that move. Mm -hmm. So we're not ashamed that part of our business is still very much anchored in print um, because we know that that's still a relevant touch. It's just adding this other um, dimension of design, you know, copywriting um, and, um lead nurturing, uh, you know, programs that we are marketing, um, you know, help position us uh, for the bigger sale. Beautiful. Uh, and then this was interesting, um, marketing your own company. We've already shown that you do that regularly, but one of the comments you made uh, in talking with your DScoop friends is that DScoop has that message of consistently marketing your business, but your comment to me was, but most of the companies never find the time to do it. And you obviously have overcome that, but that's still a, a big challenge for most of the folks on this call because we're always talking about self-promotion. All right, great, great job, Lisa. That was awesome, and thank you for the input. Uh, you know, just wrapping up today's session before we go to Q&A, um, you know, as you can see from hearing from Lisa uh, and all the study data shows, today's market requires more targeted, ongoing lead nurturing and sales-ready programs for you as well as your customers. So, you know, don't ever lose sight of that. And your customers have programs, uh, but they're not aware that you can help them. So, you know, let's let's make sure they know all of your capabilities and how you can help them. And, again, um, start to leverage more revenue growth for your organization by presenting the marketing automation solution to more customers. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, – I don't know if we're going to get an echo when we bring you on board, but I saw a bunch of questions coming in as we've been uh, here. So let's go ahead and take some of these questions. And uh, so Brenda asked, uh, how did you determine who to mail the campaign to? So I, I would say, Lisa, she's probably asking, you know, in your list development, you probably had some customers, you probably had some prospects. Um, I think she's asking, you know, how did you decide who you're going to mail to? Well, again, you know, it goes back to the, um, you know, the ideal customer profile. So we, you know, used all the resources that we have um, to identify who those customers are. So we, we looked at our existing uh, customers, um, the revenue that they generate, um, you know, the level of service that, that they require for their business. And, um, of course, we went out and we looked uh, for all of those. Um, you know, so revenue was a key player. Um, you know, how many offices they had, where were they headquartered. Um, and we created, you know, lists within each vertical. So we have vertical markets here that we pursue. And so I have different messaging for each vertical. So the association market, the corporate market, financial services, um, and so on. Um, and so we created the list for each vertical. And then depending on the sales rep's uh, skill set to communicate up into that vertical um, is then how I deployed the um, prospecting um, program or campaign uh, for each salesperson. Perfect. And then uh, Robert asked, uh, how you doing, Robert? Um, is Connect Magazine something that we can rebranded, uh, can be rebranded for other firms as well? Okay, say that again. Can it be rebranded for other firms as well? So I, yeah, I mean. Yeah, yeah, I mean you, yeah. So we, so we, we, um, you know, we purchase it from um, Canvas from Mark Potter's organization, and then uh, you can change. I, I met a lot of people actually at at, uh, at his conference that you know have changed the name of the magazine. We decided we thought Connect was you know, an appropriate um, name for us because we always are talking about connecting the dots, you know, within a within a business with, you know, marketing and printing and lead generation. So, um, yes, you can you can purchase it, and it's territorial. Um, you can 
add content to it, which we do regularly. We add, um, you know, more, you know, data for our clients depending on, you know, what their challenges are. But it's a really uh, great uh, tool that we um, feel, you know, I see it sitting on our customers' desks and they can sign up for it on our website. So it's a, it's a great tool that can be repurposed in a lot of different ways. Yeah, absolutely. We have a lot of customers that use it, so uh, I, I get sometimes 10 Connect magazines in a, in a month uh, from, you know, 10 different customers, so it's, it's interesting. Yeah, um, that's what you have to be careful of. <laughs> yep, yep, I was going to do a blog on that, so make sure you know what your customers are getting, because if we're getting it from a competitor, too, you, you want to be unique. Um, yeah. And then uh, Joe asked, do you get involved, and to what level, with creating and maintaining social media efforts as part of your campaigns? So um, you get involved, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah, we get involved. It depends, you know, I mean, social media is so broad. Um, you know, we have a campaign, Joe, that you guys are actually, you know, working with us to, um, uh, we actually presented the proposal already that has a social media element. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah, we can through programs and campaigns if they're referring to, you know, do we sell? Um, managing social media and doing LinkedIn and that sort of thing uh, directly, no, but we have a partner, um, you know, that we can utilize, you know, when we get asked for that. But it's not, um, as an individual, you know, um, request we don't get it that often. It's part of a, always part of a campaign, though, that we get asked. Perfect. And there's, there's different ways you can leverage social media within the platform. It's each, you know, if you say Facebook, you know, there's a number of different ways you can leverage that. It really depends on what the customer is trying to do. So any of our customers have questions on that, I recommend you get with customer support, uh, Carrie Driscoll, myself, Kashal, any of those team members can give you great ideas, including Ramin, our EVP of marketing. Um, this is an interesting question uh, from Joe. Good question, Joe. Also, what type of company do you feel is your biggest competition, marketing agencies, other printers, or some other competitor out there? Mm. Gosh, that's a hard one. Um, cause there's so many. So the last couple of presentations that um, that I've been on, we compete against. Um, you know, uh, we have clients like, for instance, we have a client that uh, uses Eloqua, and and Eloqua could be considered, um, you know, a competitor. Um, but what we offer, um, you know, is agility. So. You know, we've gone through Marketo, Eloqua, you know, um, other, you know, other printers, you know, because there's PSPs, there's MSPs. You know, at the end of the day, um, you know, we we can technically we compete against all of them. Um, but in our positioning statement, you know, we know that we can go up against some of those people. And, and what our difference is and what Joe and I have talked about a lot of times is we're the only resource out there that closes the loop and has the printed personalized element. So Eloqua doesn't have it, and so we are in the process right now. We have a couple of campaigns that we're running for a client that uses Eloqua, but there's no um, personalized print element. And so we're running campaigns for them, and then we wrote a connection up into Eloqua. So it really depends. Um, I mean, nowadays you're competing against the Internet, honestly. I mean, they can Google search, you know, uh, lead generation campaign, and they'll come up with out of the, you know, can stuff that you can do with you know quote unquote constant contact really, mm -hmm. but it's not at the depth and breadth of what um, we communicate um, and sell. So uh, the competition is really it varies. I'm sorry, I couldn't be more <laughs> specific, yeah, no, but that's I think you compete against lots yeah. of different people. I think you have but to know you, your your customer. And it varies by vertical market. You know, in the educational market, you'll have a set of competitors. Yeah and, you know, in corporate marketing and other, but you, you're spot on. Um, interestingly, you know, in talking to some corporate marketers, uh, print does matter for a lot of marketers out there, and unfortunately a lot of them have forgotten about it over the years because they were doing poor print programs, you know, just direct mail that end up in your mailbox, and when it becomes more targeted, more personalized with all the elements we train on, it's more effective four to six times. So. Uh, that is a competitive advantage against the Eloquist and the pure marketing automation uh, engines out there. Um, there's a question from Ed. Uh, the magazine you're sending, you write it at all? I, I think all that copy comes to you already pre-done, right? 
Oh yeah, it's fabulous. So we so we um we have the rights to DC, Maryland and Virginia. The content comes to us in a in a in a PDF, so um you don't have to print the magazine if you choose not to, but we partner with um our our paper vendors and we you know promote different papers and you know we use it as a tool um to say to people, you do need to incorporate, you know, print into how you market because, you know, email alone is just not effective. I mean, the results are very, yeah. very low, and there are so many brilliant things that you can do. Because I'm, I'm sure most of the people on the phone, I think, Joe, are, are you know, printing companies, right? Yeah. Um, so, I, so I think that's the thing that we all have to, um, you know, remember to incorporate is uh, dimensional printing. Certainly, our toolbox campaign. Um, we got fabulous, you know, results from it, and, you know, the best compliment is when somebody wants to uh, knock off your uh, marketing, um, and so I think that um, anybody who wants to talk offline about, you know, ideas and where we get our ideas and how we incubate things, um, I'm, happy to, I'm happy to talk to them about it. Great, and I'll, uh, I had Lisa's email up earlier that, um, actually, I can, let me just get out of this and we'll go to that. Um, so you have her email address there. We've got a couple more questions. We're after 12 o'clock, but there's a couple more questions here, and uh, I think it would be beneficial if we just went through them real quick. If you'd like to just stay with us, we'll take care of them real quick, and then we'll wrap up. And uh, let me just get Lisa's picture up here with her contact information. Should be into that one. There we go. So uh, there's Lisa's email uh, address. So um, this is a... a Interesting question from Tom. Good question. Do you sell print to ad agencies? If you do, do they have any issue with you selling marketing services? Uh, great question, and no. Um, I have um, I have agencies that I actually have gone into the agencies and presented to ownership about using um, uh, our services uh, to help them uh, promote their own business and also get in front of other clients. Because remember. Advertising agencies, most of the ones that I work with anyway, don't have Marketo, don't have Eloqua, unless you're, of course, talking about an Ogilvy or somebody that is, you know, huge. Um, mm. um, but I just actually got asked to come to New York to a large uh, agency, um, you know, to talk to them about the services that we uh, have to offer because they've got clients that they create strategy for, um, but they don't have the deployment tools like we do, um, to be able to send these campaigns out. I mean, some do and some don't. So I think it also, it just really goes back to um, really making sure that you know who you're communicating to. And I think that kind of a question um, really stems off of the 80s and the 90s where printers really, uh, advertising agencies controlled all of the print. They were doing all the annuals, all the corporate work, and people were fearful that if they offered something that was in competition with an agency, that they would no longer be a good um, partner anymore, and that has definitely changed um, with everyone that I've talked to. So I think you go in and you'd be proud of the services that you have to offer, and it just makes you that much more of a deep resource for them if you are a printer that offers marketing services like we do. Um, I think it makes you a more valuable tool for that agency. Yeah, totally agree. Steve gave you a nice shout out. He says, been on many, many Mindfire webinars and never been more impressed with a speaker. Lisa's very impressive. I agree, Steve. That's why we have her here. Um, <laughs> Thank great you. job. Uh, all right, so um, this is a good question from Oris. Great to see you here. Um, he said, has any Mindfire studio, studio added print jobs of certain volume? Or in general, smaller since they're targeted certain groups of targeted people only. Or did companies uh, that join? Yeah, go ahead. Answer that first part. Yeah, no, I mean every. Uh, so, so let me just say this: every campaign or program, because I used to call them campaigns, and now I call them programs. I, I kind of teeter back and forth between the between the two words. Every campaign that we sell, I strong. I say to every person that we talk to, you have to incorporate print or you will not have the results that you want to have. Um, and I also go into what Joe taught me a long time ago about the, you know, A-B testing, A-B testing. I mean, if you have digital equipment in, 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 in your facility, which you have to to sell MindFire, really, um, uh, you know, use it and, and promote it strongly because people are unsure of how to market. 
And so the stronger you are in your conviction about telling them best marketing practices for how they're going to grow their business, and most importantly, market it this way yourself. If you're not using MindFire to market your own business, um, you, you, you need to get on the line with Joe. So I, I hate to sound like a plug, Joe, but um, – if you're not using this technology yourself, it's very hard for you to, to have credibility to sit in front of people and tell them how to market if you're not touching them this way on a regular basis on your own. So Amen. I, Amen. I, I think you really need to do it that way, yeah. yeah. Last question, a good question from Steve as well. Um, and, again, Lisa, thank you so much for taking time on your busy day to, to speak to all of us. You did an awesome job, as I knew you would. Uh, what kind of data analytics capabilities do you think a firm like McArdle needs to compete against more data-driven marketing service firms? Oh, we, I mean, you, we have it all. I mean, we, we utilize, you know, every uh, resource that we have to, to offer data analytics. So it depends on the needs of the, of the client and what kind of analytics they need, but we can deliver everything. Any analytic they need, um, it's, it's at our fingertips, whether it's through um, MindFire or analytics that we use. If they ask us to go and purchase a list, we have list uh, providers that are partners of ours that offer uh, amazing analytics. Just keep in mind, what I say to our clients all the time is, you know, I can give you a lot of analytics, but not all the analytics matter. So yep. it depends on it depends on what you're trying to get to. So um, and then you, you you buy that information. So I, I think it really, um, again, it's all about sitting down with um, your prospects and your clients and asking them, um, you know, those granular questions about what is it, what what is the goal um, that they're are, they're trying to achieve um, by doing this lead, you know, nurturing, whether it's getting more college students, whether it's getting more nurses, whether it's you know, promoting um, a new HR or IT service that a publisher may have um, and helping them draw a really clear uh, picture will then let them know that they need, you know, four top, four top analytics that they need out of the data. And Lisa's added, and she's got some great internal staff, too. They're very bright people that slice and dice that, and, you know, they're always getting us on the phone to, to drill further. So I think, you know, like, Lisa said it, it relates back to what the customer's need is. And, you know, often you're not serving the customer's need by just giving them a truckload of reports. There's three or four reports that really tell a big part of the story and, you know, the conversion to actual ROI. So great question. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we went a little long, and because we had such an awesome speaker, and Lisa ours know we you see on the screen, you see her email. Uh, and, again, Lisa, I can't thank you enough. And I thank all our customers yeah. for being our customers and, and joining us on the awesome questions. You, this is recorded. So the question was asked again, is it being recorded? And it will be available to view and learn from. And, again, thank you for joining us. We've got a couple of webinars next month with great topics as well, so join us there as well. We'll talk to you all soon. Thank you. All right, guys, Have a great thank afternoon. you. Bye-bye. All right, bye-bye.